Hi there, Bruce Wallace from Dundee and Victoria Chess Club in Bonnie, Scotland. But it's a sad day for all chess uh, fans, uh, hearing of the death of Bobby Fischer, a great genius of the game, and I, I hope we'll all remember him, and particularly through the beauty and mastery of his games. Anyway, this game uh, is between myself, who was black, against Gordon Robertson in the Dundee and Victoria uh, Club Championship that we play every year. It's a, a first round match. Gordon's higher rated than me, uh, a, a stronger player. He's rated about 1660. Uh, my rating's gone down, I'm only about 1329, but I was higher. Um, so, this I thought was a good performance. Let's get on with the game. Um, Gordon kicks off with e4, I play c5, and then Gordon plays f4. Now, in our club, quite often, um, guys play the Grand Prix attack, which starts off with the move knight c3, then knight c6, uh, then f4. And to that, I'm playing a line now with uh, with e6, which I think is solid enough. However, after um, c5, uh, Gordon played f4. Now, this allows black to strike into the centre immediately with d5. White well, can take the pawn, and it would be a different game, but in this situation, Gordon pushes e5. Now, I play bishop f5. And I've already got a slight advantage with this move. Gordon plays knight f3, and then I play e6. And this is a bit like a French defence, except the bishop is outside the pawn chain. So it's like playing a French defence with advantage. But Gordon does play the, the best move here. He plays bishop b5, um, and I play knight d7. I, I could have played knight c6 there. It doesn't make a great deal of difference. Uh, but then castle, and then I challenge the bishop. And if the bishop retreats, which is a playable move, um, I can develop um, um, my position with, with a number of uh, possibilities. But Gordon swaps off the, the bishop. Then queen takes, and then Gordon plays knight c3. Now, now this is just a positional blunder, uh, and I'll, I'll show you why. However, a better move here for white is just d4, um, striking into the centre, and he could develop his pieces. I, I won't go into lines out of this, but... It's uh, it's about even chances, although although black has a, a slight edge. Um, but Gordon, after uh, queen takes d7, played knight c3, wh wh which is a blunder because it, it allows me, and I didn't have to wait long to play this move, d4, attacking the knight, forcing it to move. Um, and it's only got two squares, really. Um, it can either go back to b1, um, or it can go to e2. And again, didn't have to think d3 which poses white all sorts of uh, all sorts of threats he's more or less forced to take uh, if he moves the knight um, I take the c pawn attacking the queen and it's a, a huge advantage to to black so he's forced to take and then bishop takes and the bishop's going to be in uh, uh, in residence on d3 for some time um, and here white should have played f5 um, c4 for black then f takes F takes, and there is some counterplay, and, and the advantage uh, is still there for black, but it's not massive, and so white will have counterplay. However, after bishop uh, takes d3, um, Gordon plays uh, rook e1, either to get out the pen or to activate the knight or something. Um, but here I just played c4, which cements the bishop on d3, um, and the problem here for white is development. He, he can't move his, his, um, his d pawn. Um, so it's very difficult. He can't he can't develop his queen. There are no squares, so the queen is on its starting uh, square. Um, the bishop can't get out, and it will, it will take two moves with uh, with b3 and then bishop to b2 or bishop a3. Um, and there's a whole number of holes, particularly the dark squares um, around Black's king. Um, so he's very vulnerable indeed. So Black's advantage here is almost two pawns. Gordon attempts to develop it with b3. Um, uh, I don't bother about that. I immediately play bishop c5 check, king h1, and then I played uh, b5. Alternatively, there, uh, alternatively there, I could have played knight h6, which also has a lot of threats, but uh, after king h1, uh, b5 uh, maintains the advantage fairly substantially. Uh, Gordon plays bishop uh, b2, and then knight h6. Um, and Gordon played h3. Here, he should have tried to close up the centre and, and uh, try and um, 
stop the bishop, uh, the bishop's influence in the position. Um, so he plays knight um, e to d4, it blocks off the bishop and it does open up the rook. Um, still big advantage to black here because I just castle him completely safe and I've got a, a big initiative. However, after knight h6, he played h3 and knight f5 and knight c1 because the, the bishop on d3 is becoming intoler intolerable here. So I merely castle. Um, now alternatively there, knight g3 was a, a big advantage as well. Uh, of nearly three pawns because king h2, which is forced, um, then bishop uh, f2 and the rook is trapped. It's nowhere to go. Knight takes d3, um, queen takes, um, pawn takes and then queen takes and I'm threatening um, the f4 pawn and I'm also threatening um, the rook. So, you know, it's a crushing advantage. However, I, I castled and I've still got a big advantage. Knight takes, c takes, um, rook here and now um, bishop f1 and the rook's trapped. Um, it can't go here, it can't go here and uh, if it goes here it's knight g3 and uh, the rook has lost to a fork. Uh, if it goes here it's lost to a fork. So the rook has no squares and it's lost. Um, so I, I'm going to gain a material advantage. Bishop a3 attacking the rook <coughs> but I merely put my rook behind the queen. King h2 um, and I'm in no hurry here to win the rook. It's trapped so bishop g3 check king goes back, now I take the rook, queen takes, and then knight d4, queen e4, and then I just swapped off. However here, um, a crushing move is knight e2. Um, hitting the rook on on c1, and also threatening uh, a fork of queen and king on g3. Um, so White loses um, the rook because he has to move the queen. But in fact, after queen e4, knight f3, I've still got a huge advantage. Queen takes, uh, rook a to c8, and I expected him to swap off here uh, or play some sort of other move, but he moves the rook to e1, and um, black's advantage is massive. Rook c2, queen e3. Uh, now I could have taken the a pawn here, but I thought it's irrelevant. Um, I bring the I bring the uh, the queen in queen f3 and that allows me to take the pawn on d2 and white's position is collapsing bishop d6 queen f2 um, threatening to take the rook on e1 or to exchange queens so queen t4 and I played um, rook e2 and white resigned um, He's crushed here. Um, if, for example, he takes, um, I take back with the pawn, and I'm going to get another queen. I'm threatening to check the king. Um, so White resigned a move before. An overview and summary there of that game. Um, it was a Sicilian defence um, with f4, d5, striking back in the centre. Bishop outside the pawn chain. Um, P5 check, knight here, castled, uh, attacked the bishop, um, he got rid of the bishop, queen took, knight c3 and then the decisive mistake that, knight, knight c3, I cut the board in two, um, bishop came in and white not playing the best defensive moves here from a bad position and I capitalised on my advantage, eventually get into a situation, um, where I had decisive threats and the D pawn now cut the board in two winning the rook exchange and gradually developing my position um, till I won the D pawn and was going to win uh, with a crushing material advantage. So I thought I played fairly well there. I thought my opponent
played lacklustre moves um, but nevertheless a good win I hope you enjoyed it um, let's think about Bobby Fisher and his great contribution to chess and see you soon on YouTube